the surface, the concepts of fusion and fission have been considered for hundreds of years. In the past, it was called alchemy, but the goal here isn't to turn a chunk of lead into gold. Fusion and fission will build up or break down the nucleus of an atom. Fusion is when two or more nuclei combine to create a nucleus of greater mass. All elements exist because fusion from hydrogen atoms created larger atoms up through lead. Stars are powered by fusion, creating helium and other elements, and supernovas create the heavier elements. Fusion requires very, very high temperatures in order to occur. We're talking over 40 million degrees Celsius. This is what's happening in our sun, so the high temperatures make sense. Let's look at a reaction that occurs in the sun. Deuterium is an isotope of hydrogen with one neutron, and tritium is an isotope of hydrogen with two neutrons. When they collide under high temperature conditions, they form a helium atom with two protons and two neutrons. They release a neutron, written with the lowercase n for the symbol, and they release a huge amount of energy. Now, it would be amazing if we could harness this massive release of energy to feed our need for electrical energy, but we run into two problems with fusion. Fusion requires temperatures that are very high and very difficult to attain, and the reaction itself is nearly impossible to control. To get the high temperatures to start the reaction, we need something like a nuclear bomb, and once that's going, good luck trying to control it. Fission is, in a small part, the opposite of fusion. It's the splitting of a nucleus into smaller fragments by the release of neutrons and lots of energy. But nuclear fission will only happen when neutrons hit one of two fissionable isotopes, uranium-235 or plutonium-239. First, a neutron hits uranium-235, which makes it so unstable it breaks into two smaller parts and also releases three neutrons. If these neutrons hit other uranium-235 atoms, it can start a chain reaction. A chain reaction is where fission releases neutrons, which had other fissionable atoms producing more neutrons, which can react with even more fissionable atoms, and so on and so forth. We can harness the energy released from fission much more easily than harnessing fusion's energy. Nuclear reactors are the heart and soul of nuclear power plants. We use controlled fission in fuel rods that are cooled by a coolant fluid, usually water. The heat from the core is used to generate steam, which will drive a turbine that creates electricity in a generator. The large towers that you may be used to seeing are actually just for cooling down and condensing the water so that it can be reused in the system. There's no radioactive material in those cooling towers, just steam. The fuel rods are made of a metal which contains uranium-235 or plutonium-239. When the fuel rod is low in fissionable atoms, it's considered to be spent used up. Spent fuel rods are still radioactive, so they must be placed underwater in holding tanks to cool them down, and the water also acts as a shield to reduce radiation levels. The rods glow blue because of Sharonkov radiation. The rods can also be stored here for many years, and may later be recycled or moved to a more permanent storage location. Now perhaps most notoriously, fission and fusion can be used in nuclear weapons. The fission bomb, also known as the atom bomb, includes weapons whose explosive output is exclusively from fission reactions. Many fission bombs have been dropped to test and study their power and nuclear fallout, which is the radioactive contamination that's left in its wake. Only two fission bombs have been used in warfare, and thankfully, none have been used since. Thermonuclear bombs are weapons that use fission to trigger fusion reactions with tritium, deuterium, or lithium deuteride. In order to get the fusion reaction started, a fission reaction must occur first to create the high temperatures that are needed. The fusion reaction doesn't create nuclear fallout, but the fission reaction does. Thermonuclear bombs are the most powerful and potentially destructive nuclear weapon. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.